So a few little things. We're going to get started right about now on the questions, but due to limitations on the poll questions, we do use abbreviations and shorthand extensively. You might want to have had additional answers, but we're limited to five. There are a few questions out here, and I'll try to highlight them to you that there's more than one correct answer. And do understand it will be a little bit fast. And the first subject area tonight is risk management and single pilot resource management. And I, I use this picture purposely to get started on this tonight is all of us probably would agree that this was a risky adventure, uh, has some hazards associated with it. And what crosses my mind is at a minimum, at an absolute minimum, you had to have two people in on this, that two people said, yeah, this is a good idea. More than likely three, and even more than likely than that is four, because there's probably somebody there with the camera taking the picture. And, you know, although we don't use it all the time and even in the faa you know our books will say oh use this all the time well this risk assessment matrix is better probably used for many of us to look at a situation and you know i look at this situation there and that's where you can have a good discussion about what the risk assessment matrix is you know it catches my attention with this is you know in reality what do i think the likelihood that something bad will happen with what we saw in that prob other picture, it's probably down here. It's not likely going to happen all too often. It's probably improbable or remote. But what could the consequences be if something went bad on that takeoff? You know, and towing a glider, it probably has more hazards associated with it on takeoff than just a regular airplane takeoff or even a regular helicopter rotorcraft takeoff. But, you know, that could be very catastrophic or create critical damage for those involved. So, you know, looking at the risk matrix, this is the area there that something like this type of operation brings up to me. But, Needless, that being said, now is the time to actually get into a poll question. And here is the first one for this evening. So let's go ahead. I'm going to launch that now. Uh, risk management as part of the ADM, which is aeronautical decision-making process, relies on which features to reduce risk associated with each flight. And uh, you guys can see the answers there. Um, so I'm not going to just read them to you, but please go ahead and, and, uh, and vote. And now is the time to vote, you know, the classic vote early, vote often, but, uh, <laughs> you know, e just give it your best educated guess. This is actually a question from the current private pilot knowledge test. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this out now. We got a good 75% and we'll share that one. And what did we have as the most popular answer, John? Uh, the most popular answer was the second one, Steve. Situal situational awareness, problem recognition, and good judgment with 68%. All right. Well, this is good. It is most of you got the right answer? Is it is situational awareness, problem recognition, and good judgment? You know, if you are interested, that is on subject matter code. Uh, PLT022 for those instructor types, uh, if you are taking a knowledge test, and where it specifically comes from is the definition of risk management in the uh, risk management handbook. And on the knowledge test now is there is also a change to the ACS is actually this question on an ACS test would show up as PA for private pilot airplane, the one or Roman numeral one is for the area of operation, which is pre-flight. H is subject area and knowledge element for aeronautical decision making. All right, let's go with the second question. Hazardous attitudes occur to every pilot to some degree at some time. What are some of these hazardous attitudes? I'm liking it. I'm liking it, folks. 
this is this is one that I think a lot of people have heard of, which is great. Vote early, vote often. All right, we're at 45 seconds now. It's looking good, looking really good. In fact, we're so so high. I'm going to go ahead and close that. We got so many of you voted on it, and I will share. And how are we looking, John? Yeah, we're looking good. Um, the one that got the most was the second answer, B, anti-authority, impulsivity, macho, and resignation. It's 78%. Uh, answer number C got 20%, and answer number A got 2%. What are the What do we all think about that? You guys agree with that, Rob, Dan, John? Yep, I like it. I like it too. I like it very much. All right. I concur. I concur. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So that is I, I know some answer. I know some people, Steve, that have all four of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it, and it is. Each of us can have them at different times. And that's one of the things that's great about having, you know, I, I know John, you and I have done this for years. Uh, and we've we've done it even within the office with other pilots and stuff. But, you know, having a mentor or someone to bounce things off of and, hey, what do you think about this? And, you know, you, you need that sanity check you know, to say, are you really, really sure? But that is the correct answer. And that's where you can find it is the risk management handbook. It's in the glossary, Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. It's in Chapter 2 in the current version. And in the Aviation Instructor's Handbook, which is the newest uh, handbook that is out there right now, others will be following soon. It is actually in Chapter 1. All of Chapter 1 of the new Aviation Instructor's Handbook is on risk mitigation and teaching risk mitigation. And that's actually what I'm in the process of reading right now. I'm about halfway through, but just like the regulations, it's a great read just before going to sleep. I'm not a psychologist. So I have a little bit of challenge with that. All right. Next question here is, in the aeronautical decision-making process, what is the first step in neutralizing a hazardous attitude? All right. And you have that there. If you would, folks, vote early, vote often. I'm liking the answers that I'm seeing, which is great. You know, this one, I actually did this on a recent practice test. Um, it was in the CFI, but I, it's also in the private and commercial on it. And I, I came up with the right answer, but I had to think about it for a little bit. You know, and it wasn't that it wasn't easy, but it was like, well, let me think about the steps I would think about this. What, what would come first? in this. All right, just a couple more seconds. Uh, boy, you guys have been reading some FA material, I think. I'm going to share this one, and John, I'm going to go to you again. <laughs> okay, I, I think I'm going to do it a little differently, Steve. Okay. I'm just going to read through all, all three of them, and then just give the percentages for each one. It'll make more sense to people than having me bounce around. Um, but okay, um, the first answer, recognizing hazardous thoughts, 94%. Recognizing the invulnerability of the situation is 2% and making a rational judgment is 4%. So recognizing hazardous thoughts is the clear favorite. That is the correct answer is recognizing the hazardous thoughts. You don't know. That's right out of the aviation instructor's handbook. You can also find it in the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge. I'll go on to the next one here. This is a true false, but I'll give the question over to you, John. Okay. Single pilot resource management, SRM, involves the art and science of managing only the resources on board the aircraft. True or false? Yeah. You've all been doing very, very well with this. You've at least been reading the FAA material, if not believing the FAA material on it, uh, which is great. So think about this one here. And think about it in terms of instrument flying. That That is an easy way, or that might help you understand it a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and close this because we're at such a high percentage again. And I'll share it. There you go, John. Okay. These folks have some background in taking FAA tests. They know yes. that it says only or always <laughs> in the question. <laughs> the spidey sense starts to tingle. Okay. The first answer, true, only got a uh, 8 and 8%. And false got 92%. Excellent. And that is 
the correct answer there is false. There's your reference, but a couple things to think about. Within the FAA, we have you know the 5P checklist that we recommend that pilots in their pre-flight planning through their post-flight at least run through in their mind five times. You know, the five Ps, five times, check your pilot, your plan, your plane, your programming, your passengers. But maybe a little bit easier way, another common thing associated with this is what's known as the shell model, is even if you're flying single pilot, you do rely upon other people out there, other liveware. And probably the most prevalent of those is air traffic controllers or other pilots in the area if you're you're flying around. You know, I many of you know I fly gliders for fun. You know, that is so much single pilot flying, but you really do rely upon because you need ground crew, you need tow pilots, you know, you might need retrieval, you're working with other pilots to find where the best lift is and everything. It's not just what's in your cockpit, it's working with the resources that are outside your cockpit to help you out whether that be flight service over the radio in the old days, like people like me are familiar with, uh, or for others. Here's a, the next one. This is the last one on the risk section, or the risk um, single pilot resource management aeronautical decision-making is just risk is. So take a look, vote early, vote often. And we're going to talk not only about the word risk, but a couple other words that the FAA tends to use in talking about risk management with it here. We're getting there. We're passing through about 50% of you voting out there. This one is a little bit more interesting on it. It is a challenging one. It's one all of us have had to talk about so many times in our safety presentations. And it, sometimes it's a challenging concept to get across. But when you look at all three words and their definition together, it, it makes more sense. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one here and I'll share it, John. Okay, um, the answer is a present condition that could lead to an event or accident, 67%. The impact of a hazard that is not controlled or eliminated, 33%. And the last answer, freedom from conditions that can cause death and damage, got nobody. Okay, well, that's great. <laughs> that, that definitely helps. Believe it or not, uh, the correct answer on this one is B, the future impact of a hazard that is not controlled or eliminated. When we talk about risk, we usually talk about hazards risk and safety. And the answer A that everybody gave, a present condition that could lead to an event is what we define, we in the FAA that is, as a hazard. And when we recognize a hazard, we take a look at what risk is associated with it and what actions we may take to minimize that risk so that we have some control to it. And what that will do is work on improving our safety, which is the freedom from conditions. So you can take a look at that. That's in the Aviation Instructor's Handbook, Chapter One. Uh, it's right in the very beginning of that. But the three, I'm gonna share this again, just so people can see it, is the first definition is the definition of a hazard. The second definition there, the impact of a hazard that is not controlled or eliminated is risk. And then the third definition you see there is the definition of safety.